Hello there, I'm another Magento Dev. Right then, got a good live stream for you today. So we're gonna be looking at an, a new addition to our Vue.js Magento theme takeover thing, uh, which is a module essentially that we're taking over as much of Magento as possible to make it as fast as, re as possible, responsive as possible, and also as kind of bespoke as possible from a developer's perspective, you know, how we can use better frameworks, more modern frameworks to leverage the power that is Magento within the back end, within the product inventory manager, with all that type of stuff, but create better experiences on the front end. That's what we're after. And today we're looking at a big part of that. We're looking at the mini cart of Magento. And as you can see on my screen here, we have got um, a slide out mini car. Um, and I've created this uh, in advance to sort of, um, I've been, I've, I was working on a few concepts last week in the live stream and I ate a couple of dead ends, um, which I looked into and I figured out a sort of really good way of doing it, like a, like a, a concept in terms of how it can work in an existing Magento store. So what have I used to create this? Well, essentially it's part of my uh, module, my, my Magento module, and it is a Vue.js component, which is mounted to the theme, the Magento theme in a specific place. So you don't have to have the entire module to be able to, and I will be updating the code repo, by the way, on, on GitHub with, with this by, by the end of the, later on today. Uh, but what I'm trying to say is you don't have to have the full module taking over the full Magento to, to take advantage of this cart and I'll show you for why in a second. But it's quite cool. I thought I'd just show it at the beginning of the stream and then I'm going to take it out and I'm going to build it back in piece by piece. Um, so essentially it, it works by at the moment I ain't got any add to cart buttons in, in this section but if I jump into say the women's section um, on here and I add some shorts um, and I'm gonna get all this refreshing so like it doesn't quite work within the theme yet in terms of the styles but once I go into um, the home page for example is fully uh, developed in Vue.js this is full Vue.js um, and if I go into there now there's the there's the shorts that I added and now it's saying look I had a, a little bit at the top there like a delivery widget which is I've spent over 150 so I'm getting my free free delivery this is all built with logic that I've written in a view component which I'm going to go through but say for example I remove that it updates so I've updated my car in real time on that button click it's actually gone to the API it's gone to the Magento GraphQL API and it has updated the data so if I refresh here and then go back to it, it's still gone. So essentially, that almost looks like it, it's an outfit there, that guy with women's legs. Um, so it, it updates in real time and then I've got some buttons here obviously that go through to the cart and you'll see the cart is the same. So it all stays consistent and I'm gonna show you how I've achieved this. So like, how have I achieved this? Well, as I said, this is a block that I have got within Magento. So this is um, uh, the, the car, essentially this part, is actually mounted to the theme by a, a specific block. It's this block here. So, for example, if you've got this code off GitHub, you'll be able to just, if you wanted to, inject this into your theme. In, I've, I've, only, I've, I've, I've put it in both default and, um, oh, it's there in, in default and CMS index index. I'm, I'm showing you it in CMS index index because of this is where I'm looking at it at the minute. But essentially, this, um, this we did cover this last week, but I'm just gonna go over it one, really quickly. Um, I've got a template called cart, which links to that block. And then in that cart, I'm essentially getting cart data. I'm JSON, JSONifying it and then passing it to my view app, which is mounted there on, on cart app. So you could just have those bits and you can you can have this cart essentially, it's, it's free, free for everyone. I, I got stuck last week in terms of being able to make the cart, the cart ID match from Magento right through to the API and, and, in both, and in both places because it wasn't obvious at first where you get the cart ID from. And anyway, I figured it out. So this is what you do essentially. You 
need a, a, a block basically so I'm getting the cat if so if I go to cat data PHP and then if you have a look in here I've written an extra function and the function that I've written is one that goes and gets the quote ID the masked quote ID the mask and, and it came down to the terminology in the end a masked quote ID is is a is relation relationally linked to the cat ID so the masked quote ID is this fella here so these are all the carts that are currently in this Magento. And why do I need this masked ID? Well, I need the masked ID because it's the one that you need to use for the API loop. It's the one that you need to use to be able to query your cart with the API. And what I needed to do was present that to my module, my cart module here. So if I just jump into Vue.js, uh, DevTools, and I just jump into my mini cart, I'm actually passing the cart ID to Vue.js, which I'm then using to be able to talk to um, the cart in the API. So I'm able to delete things by talking to the cart from the API, but I'm able to get information from Magento from this block here. So that block is essentially passing me, this block is passing the quote ID into um, the, the sort of the total section this private function here the cart totals uh, which is being passed into my full sort of cart data function here and then the cart data function I'm passing to view and then I'm picking that up here in view as you can see and I'm basically able to do shit with it but the key thing is it's this so once you've got this you need to keep this because that's your cart state so essentially in my view app this is my state management this is where I'm sort of making sure that I keep everything in sync. So if I went to the API separately and I paste in this cart ID, um, just making sure this isn't my delete one, and then I send it, look, I'm getting the cart that I'm seeing on the front end. So everything's in sync. So I'm sort of, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm talking to, um, I'm talking to the API one way and then I am sort of, uh, uh, displaying things the other way which means that it all syncs up nicely as a sort of a legit module right then. so let's let's see how let's let's get into the nitty-gritty of the actual uh, view build so that's how it's working and now this is how you would customize your version or then basically I'm gonna go through how I built this version so I'm just gonna remove um, some things I'm gonna just and this will completely uh, break it I'm going to get rid of this cart folder. I have got it saved, so I'm going to. It's going to speed up my. Uh, it's going to speed up my development of it. But I want to walk. I want to walk you through it. So okay, I'm just going to pull that back. So essentially, I've just got. I've just got my cart here, um, and, and nothing much going on now because I've. I've broke stuff. Uh, I think I've broke too much. Have I broke too much? Don't know what I've done there in terms of the WordPress. Um, API. I'll just make sure that this is still. Yeah, it's the secure certificate on this. Right, so I'm just. That's providing my data for the home page, which I've touched on in another live stream. Find it on my channel. It's a good one. Uh, right, so now I've just got my car mounted to that PHTML file, starting from scratch. Right then. So I'm just gonna help myself out by opening up my other one and I'm gonna walk you through how I approach this. So now the the entry point for my cart app is cart.view, which is this one here. So this is where my sort of initial contact with the rest of its components is, is gonna be. So what do I need in here? Well as always you sort of need a, you need some script tags because we're going to be writing some JavaScript and we're going to be writing some JavaScript that not only controls the slide in and out function but also controls the um, cart being sent to the, the, the components that, that we require to populate the cart with information so we need that in there and then as always we're going to just have an export default function there and the way I thought of doing this was I wanted the button outside of the mini cart because I want the button to be clickable within the header 
and that's sort of like an absolutely positioned button in the header and then I want that to be clickable and then I wanted sort of a full screen almost takeover in, in our terminology so we'd have like a fixed uh, gradient uh, op op opacity 50 background with the card sliding out over the top of it to sort of like focus your attention uh, on, the, on the car. So that, that, the way to achieve that, in my opinion, was to um, have one div tag in here, which would have been like mini car, just for reference, um, and then two components. And I wanted a button component and a mini car component. I'm just going to reference these here now, but they're not going to work yet because I don't have the actual components. So. What I thought of doing was, because this is like a, a global function, I thought I'll just put the car section in here and I might find other things. I might, I could, you know, build components for like the shipping notification and all sorts. So um, I thought I'll have a little folder called car and within this folder, I'll start with my components. So I'm gonna have a button dot view and then I'll just scaffold that out. So um, it's gonna need it's going to need a div tag in here, otherwise view will kick off. Um, so this would be the button. Um, okay, that'll be a button. And then in here also, I want the mini cart, the, the slider that, that comes out. The What do they call it in the old, they used to call it a tray. They could have called it, you know, they used to call it a tray menu or something like that. Probably goes by many names. Dot view. Um, right in, so those are my two components that I'm referencing here, and now I've got to import those components. So I'll import them. Do you know what? I'll speed this part up because it's pretty obvious what I'm doing, and I'll just paste these in here from ones I made earlier. So this is essentially going and getting the button and the mini cart from the folder here, yeah, cart. Um, and then I need a components section within my view um, and I will reference button and I will reference mini cat and I've got an error because I have missed out in mini cat just my template um, Notice that my auto reloader and everything's working. So I've got my button and I've got my mini cart. So that's stage, step one, if you like. So get your structure in order first is, is the best thing. Sort of plan out how you're gonna structure the rest of the module is the, is the best advice I can give you at that point. Right then, so what else are we gonna need? Well, we're gonna need a way I think first of all of passing the card data the cart data to the various um, components and well, actually when I say various component I just need to pass the cart data to my mini cart part of it the mini cart part of it and um, so we've got to write that down here in a well first of all let's create ourselves a data object to cap to capture um, this information so data objects are very useful for making sure and also obviously for debugging as well with your view tools, making sure that you're sending the right data, the right types of variable, for example, like it catches me out sometimes when I'm passing arrays to objects and stuff like that. And, and you you want a place to be able to keep an eye on um, your, or to, to sort of having a collection, your diff, various pieces of data that are gonna hold your component together. And in this, um, example we need an array called cart so i want to be able to see that going into there and i want to i want to run from if you like this centralized function there are many ways you can in uh, sort of ingest data pull data from different apis and things but i always recommend putting that data back into data in there when i'm talking about data uh, and returning it to your component for use within your template so the way i would reference that then would I'd have a sort of a reactive variable there um, and in that variable I'm going to have a cart and that's passing the cart from there to there obviously it's empty at the moment but that's that's basically the 
the, the, the props going going up to, to mini car at this point and then we're gonna to need to hydrate this with some data so this is where um, the data that was sending to from cart PHP to cart PHTML this JSON data comes in comes in handy so we're able to pick up this JSON data from with a created function by doing by doing this so I've got some actually this is all sort of legacy just ignore this for the time being just ignore this product one for the time being it was with regards to testing but this one here is where I'm going to get the cart and then this function here is going to get the cart mask so I'm going to create a method and that method is going to be called the cart ma the get the cart mask which I've referenced just up there so there's get the cart ma mask mask so what this is doing is it's referencing the app element just using vanilla js they're going to get the id cart app which is that and then I'm grabbing the data data cart which is that and it's json which is good for um, passing into your view app which I'm doing here so I'm grabbing that json and I'm saving it as a, as a as a const variable there and then in this one the cart mask I'm passing that to a variable up here called cart id right so the cart id starts off as being null and then it's going to be populated by um, by this method so this method is running first in here populated by that and then I've got a simple so I could have put this in another method but it's a one-liner so I'm keeping it there and then I'm saying this cart which means this is going to get populated by the get cart function on my API and I've wrote the API here and then in here I've got uh, get cart so the get cart goes to the um, goes to the API basically and gets and gets the and gets the cart so it goes and gets the cart in the same way I did here so I'm populating it with the cart ID which I'm getting from the data that I'm sending through um, and I know I'm sending too much data trust me I, I'm aware that I'm sending a lot of data into the um, data cart into here so I'm sending all the data at the minute but obviously it's conceptual it's test it's in test mode if you like what I will do eventually is just make sure that I only send the cart ID basically because that's all I'm using here is I'm just grabbing look the totals mask so the cart ID cart totals mask and that's referenced here look totals mask so I'm grabbing this basically that's the bit I'm using even though I'm sending I'm sending all this stuff but most of this was for test purposes but can be cleared up later on so there you go I'm getting I'm getting the cart mask I'm passing that to my cart ID variable in view and then I'm using the cart ID variable here to go to the API and get my cart and that's how it all links together so that that basically populates my cart which I then send to my mini cart which I'm then able to display all of the data via graph QL. So that means that I'm not sort of having to work in here anymore. I'm not having to keep getting uh, the data from a cart through conventional methods like you would normally do in, in Magento. I'm able to use the power of graph QL and I'm able to go and get as much as what's available here in the order that I need it. Um, like total quantity is useful. All of this type of stuff is, is, is useful and I can get it all in one call. So I find working, if you're working within the JavaScript application, like the components like this, utilizing GraphQL is probably the best way to go rather than utilizing the PHP and, pat and, keep, and passing it in through a data attribute. But the key thing is that mask ID keeps everything in sync. It keeps your cart in sync with the cart on the API or the cart in the back end of Magento and the cart on the front end, which is started to be populated by um, which can be populated by any any function, add to cart function on the site. Um, so it, it just syncs things together. Okay, so that's that part of it completed. Right, and so now we've got a look at how we're going to get it all to work in, actually, I'm missing a bit. Because I'm using get cart here, I've got a reference, the API. 
So that, that's my function from here. So I'm pulling that in. So it's one more thing there. So I'm pulling that in and I also was getting product skill, which I've, I've commented out. But essentially I'm getting that to be able to use it here, pass it to cart ID. I'm awaiting it's finishing and then I'm um, once it does come back with the information, it's just put, putting it in there. Okay, so fairly straightforward up to now. And what with the normal is not a function, this cat mask is not a function. Uh, I'll come back to that. So I believe it, it is. Um, Okay, so next thing I'm going to need to do. Right, so now I need some variables to be able to open and close the, the cart, basically, to be able to open and close the uh, the, the slider, the draw, the draw that comes out of it. Um, and those will live at this level here. So the way I've decided to do it is I've got my button outside of my mini cart. So I'm just going to throw in this line of code around my mini cart this is built in tailwind and what this is doing is it's wrapping the mini i want the mini cart to be the, the slidey white bit and the, like the tray and i want it the this to take over the screen behind that so I've, I've opted to do that in this component so i'm controlling it by a variable there called show mini cart so i need to put that here show mini cart and then it's false by default, so closed by default. And then I want the button to be able to control the sort of operation of the mini cart. So in order to do that, I'm going to need to put um, I'm going to need to put some code into into the button. So can you see actually right even now my mini cart has now vanished, and that's because. I've got it set to false, even though it's not styled up yet. So I know that that bit's working. So I'm happy with that. So now I've got to utilize something in view, uh, which is um, emitting, uh, emitting the results of methods up components. Because what I want to do is I want to read the result of a button click within button, which is within this. I want to be able to catch it in my cart component and utilize it to be able to switch that from um, false uh, from from false to true essentially um, so how do we go about doing that right well in our button here we're gonna add some code and it's pretty basic it's pretty basic so in here we're gonna have a you can use anything as well in view I've used a span tag and the reason I use the span tag is because it's it the default button in Magento is obviously if I'm using Magento's default styles somewhere else in this theme, not just on, on the front end here, it's quite opinionated on what it needs to look like. So I just use the span and you can make spans clickable within view by adding a click event. So essentially I'd add a click event and then I would call that open cart and equals true and then I'd admit it so you can do this all in, in, in one line if you want to but I'm going to show you another way of doing it for the close button so this is emitting open cart so I'm emitting the result just move that um, just make this a bit bigger actually so I'm emitting that just need a semicolon there uh, when that spans clicked so I just need the gubbins so what I wanted was and I got this from font awesome just the default font the free one um, which is a cat a basket button to be able to click on okay and yeah that's the click function there and I need my script tags because it kicks off for not having that and then I styled it up like so which was basically um, just absolutely position 16 rem or 4 rem it actually equals look you can see there um, and I don't know what I don't need that I don't think I don't know why that's there uh, but basically it's just a 
it's just a button um, I don't have some of this I don't need actually yeah 10 MT10 from the top so these are all tailwind classes which once you're familiar with tailwind it's dead easy to use and you can kind of run, run, run with your styling quite quite easily once you're used to it so that's my button um, and if we have a look it's there so it looks all right it's just knocking about at the end there might move it or move it up a little bit um could actually say um mr no we'll say minus mr um five and it's moved so we'll give it a bit of space from from that but we've essentially we've created our cart button um let's have a look see if I can access this stuff you can see I'm passing the cart which I've already been through um, yeah we've got to, I've still got to create this this listener here um, but essentially you can see now that there's items waiting and we, we just need to sort of get them ready uh, sort of bring them through to the to the cart and get all this working um, but it's kicking off because I've left some things out and I ain't done them yet so we'll, we'll, we'll sort out the mini cart now so this part so the mini cart so this was a lot more complicated and that's why I've saved it and I'm going to sort of just bring everything in and I'm just going to bring everything in I'm going to talk through it because it would take me ages to type it all out and that would be pointless so here's my mini cart my mini cart has quite a bit going on so I told you that I was going to do a click function and emit a click function in a different way. So the way I'm doing that in the mini cart is this close button, which is just the X button, um, is linked to uh, this down here. Let me just save that. Right. It's linked to this down here, this close cart. So I'm emitting a function. So this is another way you can do it. So I did it as a one liner in the other one. But because I wanted to animate the sliding out function, I wanted to have it in my function because I wanted to set a timeout against it. So what this is going to do essentially is change. So when this component loads, it look well. I'm using a an animate variable which I've put in again my data return here. So I'm using an animate variable, and when it loads, it slides in. So basically, when it's mounted or created. So when you click on the button to open it, it comes into existence. That class is added to it, which means that it animates in. And then when I click that button to close it, it I'm telling the animate variable to change, because it's reactive, to slide out. So therefore, it then slides out. And then half a second later, we get the emit function up to the parent, which then removes it from the page. So that's essentially the functionality of the now you get that animate function and I've used animate CSS for that and I'm just going to show you animate CSS so I've used this for years it's been about it's it's really useful um, obviously it is pure CSS animation so full disclosure I tried to get you know the transitions working within view where you actually have a transition they've got built in ones transition slide trans and then you add some C you add CSS to be able then you add your own CSS down in it down in your component couldn't get it to work within Magento it was conflicting with something so what I did was I switched to animate CSS which I'm just including in my theme as a uh, link to the CDN so I'll show you where that is as a link to the CDN look animate CSS and I'm getting no conflicts with the animations whatever they work perfectly and they look great so the two I'm using as you can see from my code a second ago is I'm doing um, where's sliding sliding right so that's bringing the cart in and then slide out right which is taking the cart out so it's dead simple and it's literally those lines of code there those those um, those ones so animate animate it is like the base that you have to have if you're not come if you're not used to or used it before and then you have your animate um, and then your function which it says which is, is in the docs there and those are the docs that is as, as sort of as um, everything's in here so if I was to copy that it gives me the animate underscore and then the rotate out for example so it gives you that to be able to paste onto your you know paste into your code 
So it's really good. Can't, I can't, honestly, okay. It's really highly compatible, really good. Don't conflict with Tailwind, don't conflict with, with anything that I've, I've come across up to now. Okay, so what else have we got going on in here? So uh, the props are being delivered by Cat in here. Um, so Cat is, cat, is, is the Cat, obviously. And then in the mini Cat, we have the props and then I'm able to use cart as a variable in here um, and then I'm looping around the items here I'm using some uh, I've, in the last couple of live streams I've built this out piece by piece and it's handy because I have built out a sort of a product object here which is giving me an image so I've got a component for an image and the um, WebP, so I can get the WebP image for the image as well, which I'm able to utilize in the cart. And I've got a component for price as well. So, pardon me, excuse me, windy pops. Um, so, I've got my image component, which I'm passing the thumbnail to, and I have got my um, price component, which I'm passing the price to. So all of those are pre-built and it just speeds it again, speeds up that you know that reusable nature of, of view components. It's just brilliant. Um and, and it speeds up any any development like that. Honestly, this is fairly big, this this. I could I could um make this a lot more uh, concise. I could abstract, for example, this summary section, I could abstract this to um to a, to another component, because the summary section is where I've put the delivery calculator. And the delivery calculator is being uh, uh, calculated, if you like, or the, the, the sort of the the parameters are being calculated by this cat percentage uh, function, where I'm passing the grand total, and then I'm basically saying if the result of this is a hundred, so you you basically made it, so you've spent a hundred and fifty, and obviously if it's over a hundred, it's still a hundred percent, because there's no such thing as a hundred and ten percent, even though obviously. Premier League football managers constantly say there is, uh, there there isn't anything above a hundred percent, and the hundred percent there is, if it's a hundred percent, you get your congratulations message. If there isn't a hundred percent, then it tells you the percentage that you have got to still achieve it, and we do that by having an absolute positioned um, sort of background image above a lighter coloured one to give that sort of uh, what would you call it, like a a line percentage counter of how much you've got to go, how much you've got to spend, um, and that is calculated in in sort of the width. I assign a width to it, a width percentage based on how much there is to spend, uh, left to spend, and yeah, and that's that's basically that part of that function there, and the function that is running it is a there. It's that method there. So I'm passing the card total, and I'm basically working out the percentage up to 150. And then outputting it. The final function that's in here is the delete function, and this is the one that goes to the GraphQL API and sort of writes to the API. And it uses a mutation, and the mutation it uses, I can show you it, is here. So to remove something from the cart, and I've got quite a bit in here now because I've been doing a bit of testing. Um, so that's an add to cart, which I used before. Remove item. So it's a real simple, um, a real simple mutation. So all you need is the cart ID and the ID of the actual product, which we are getting initially. So we're getting that from there. So we've got the cart ID and we've got the ID of each product. Look, 58 that one and 60 that one. So I've just got to pass that back to the API if I want to delete something. So that's what I'm doing. So that's what this remove item function is catching the cat ID and the item, passing it in, running the query, um, and then then giving me the response, um, and and then obviously drilling in, which I've talked about before. So from response data, data remove item from cart. Cart is kind of the the hierarchy of that array. What comes back, and I'm catching that in here. <coughs> Excuse me with a with a try catch, um, but. I'm also simulating that as well. So I didn't want to faff about with actually reading that data. What I thought is because these are arrays in view and view is reactive, if I remove that item from the cart, almost like from the array in view, 
it's going to appear that it's gone. It's going to disappear in front of the customer. Then if they ever move away from that page and come back, um, that's okay because it's going to load the new cart. So it's a bit of, it's sort of, all of this is smoke and mirrors, isn't it? And then I'm also reducing the grand total by the amount of the, the cat, the, of the, of the price of the product. So it keeps that in sync as well, you know. So if you're if you've got a hundred pound in there and you remove something that's fifty, it's gonna take fifty away from the hundred and you're gonna be left with the, the fifty. So it's gonna look right to the customer. It's gonna look as if it's calculating on the fly. Which it essentially is, but it's not necessarily you know, then it goes to Magento and updates the cat. So it was one way of keeping it in sync. So I'm just gonna save this. And I was getting an error here, weren't I? Um and I'm gonna look at why I'm getting that error because it is actually stopping me from yeah, getting the cart mask is becoming is a problem here, isn't it? So let's debug that. Um, I need to figure out what I might have missed actually, because piecing things back together is quite uh, is quite dangerous, isn't it? Specific, especially when you're live on uh, when you're live on YouTube. So what else was I missing? Right. Oh, I'm missing the functions that catch the emit the emit function from. Um, I'm missing that code from 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 these buttons. So what you need, I called a function in buttons. So this is a mit functions, by the way. This is what we're looking at now. Called open cart. So that's what you use in here. So you'd say app open cart, and then you want to sort of do something when it, you know, hears about that being clicked I don't know how to describe it really when this component detects that the button's been clicked and I want to add a function to it in here called open mini cat and now I can add open mini cat as a method so it's going to do something and it's going to do something very simple which is it's going to set this show mini cat to false no, I'm in a to true. So this is the function that opens it. So it's going to set this to true when it, when that that button click is emitted, which basically should show. Yeah, it's still not working. I'll get it working on the front end in a sec. Not to worry. Not to worry. Um, I love it when we get issues um, that haven't occurred before whilst I am. Um, recording it's the best in it it's the best and then we also need a close function so we created one in there called close cart in here I'll just remind you so in here there was one called close cart which was on a click of an X which I sort of showed you at the beginning of this stream um, and then when when that when that is passed back up it's after a half a second of clicking the button which gives us time for that nice delay and that nice slide out so that's going to be captured here and then we're going to run the other function which is the inverse of this one which is close mini cat and then this show mini cat equals false so that just about is all our functionality there um, and as I said, I'm pr I'm not sure why my get function here ain't having it. Let's just let's just refresh actual Magento. So sometimes when you get an issue, so so I'm not gonna be able to see the view tools because it, there's an error. Um, it's just going to do this, it's just going to do this sort of thing. So let's just remove it for a second. So it's saying it is on cart line 10. So this still gives you a fair bit of information. Sorry, cart line 28. Still gives you a fair bit of information. So it is kicking off that when this is created. Ah, right. I wonder if I just I pull these back in. Right, so I'll just get these back in. Just make sure that it didn't error in because it's waiting for something else. And I'll just put all these back. This is what I started with. Um, now, 
still not having it. Cartland 29 is not a function. Well, it was earlier. So, what I can do though is get the cart mask. It won't. Put, I won't put it past me. If I've just spelt something wrong. Um, but the what I can actually do is I can get this. I can get this all in here. Oh, I should be able to. It might surprise me again in a minute. Um, it's definitely created function. Yeah, the error's gone. Let's see if I can access view and see what's going on here. So I'm gaming mini cart. Not to click, let me just do a refresh. Open up my tools again. This often happens when I'm streaming. There we go. Got my cart. Yeah, so this is classed as app three essentially in my is declared. Let's have a look. So I'm getting all the information as as per. Um, I've got my cat button. But I'm I'm getting everything from here, so products irrelevant. That's coming through. Um it, it knows about the cat. But mini cart, right? It's maybe something I've done wrong with the mini cart. So, mini cart from mini cart, let's just make sure that all this is. So, I did cart and then the mini cart view. It was cut, it, the mini cart was working. So, and now I should be passing that cart ID. From this information here, let's see if I can console log the cat. There's a place to start. I can. So I can console log the cat. So it is getting the information. So that means that that cat ID. Am I getting that too early? What am I doing? Yeah, so I'm getting mask from the cart that I'm pulling through from the div and then I'm getting that let me just right let's try this so sometimes you have to give your static content a bit of a kick when working in modules this way um, if I'm going to Luma theme and then I've got my module here I'm just gonna clear my JavaScript and then I'm just gonna refresh everything and it'll build back my JavaScript folder Right, so it's built it back, compiled it all again. Still not having it. So we've got the cart ID. I'm going and getting the cart because that's definitely let's make sure that is working. So we'll console log that as well. There's something really obvious. this here so it's getting everything um, great that, that's all good yeah because it's passing it up there to the cart um, the button upon open cart let's just make sure all the opening and whatnot is is all working let's just try and set his mini cart to true that should open it up yeah Right, okay, there's something wrong with the button click, clearly. So, anyway, this is a good way. So, when you're working on this, you know, when you're working on, say, say we want to style some of this up, and we've got auto reload on, I'll come back to the button click and figure out why that ain't working. Um, that's all gone a bit messy now. I'd rather, right, I'll come back, I'll come back, I'll come back to that. I've got time, I've got time. Right, so if I was working on this, let's just make sure that I'm in, yeah, you can see my code all right there. Um, if I was working on this, I would uh, want that 
set to true so, so I don't have to keep opening it obviously so that's a handy little thing that you can do within these frameworks is that you can set things um, you can set things to the state that you expect them to be after a methods fired or something like that so say for example um, I want to add a bit of space into the, to these here um, we've got the summary there and then in the cart though it's all a bit close together I might want to make the um, product title a little bit bigger so I'm referring to I'm referring to text as being extra small for the entire block which I would rather do because the majority of the text is extra small but then I want the cat the name say to be a bit bigger and I want the price to be a bit bigger so I can add a class to this and then I'm going to say text hyphen base uh, which is going to make the price a little bit bigger as well there we go so that's all good and then I'm going to add some and you can see the nice slide out motion and, and what have you as well let's see if yep so the close button's working just the open button what, what's not having it um, also yeah so I've, I've spaced all that out, na out nicely now um, and then say for example we wanted the button to be um, over to the right I'll position it like this um, over at the bottom and then we need to make sure that if I'm moving this over to I tell you what I'm gonna put this on the little span instead um, if I want this over to the right obviously I've got to find out what it's in and I'm gonna make that relative so then my absolute positioning will be all ship shape there we go, so we've got the delete button over there, we can get rid of that. You see it's recalculated everything as per the function in um, in that component. And then refresh it and it, it's staying consistent. It's all, it's all nice and, and consistent and good. So in my opinion, I like this car. I like this. I like how, you know, if I'm being honest, it took me about an hour last night to do this. An hour to build a, to build a full car. Um, and that is testament to how easy these frameworks are to work with. And I'll bang on about it loads, but this was an easy thing, easy thing for me to get up and running. Um, and yeah, I just really like, um, I just really like working with you, and I want to work on it as much as possible. And if that means I can crowbar it into the daily grind of Magento, then uh, yeah, I, w I will. Um, let me work out. Let's see if we can debug why OpenCart ain't working. Something I've done wrong there, so let's just bang in. And then we'll just make sure that this is shut. very strange so it should be emitting open cart open mini cart open mini cart definitely done something wrong haven't I definitely what have I done wrong let's try so in this situation um, let's try and console log something perhaps oh well, if I would have figured out, have I moved it to a place where it's actually not clickable or something? It's definitely there. It's definitely there. Let me grab this cat. I'm going to put it back to what it should have been. There we go, it's working now. Um, what did I do? I have no idea. Um, and they're the best. They're the best ones, aren't they? When you don't know how you fix something. But there was something I typed up wrong in that one. But basically, it's the same. So I'm getting the cat mask from that variable again. I must have mistyped something before. Either that or now Magento's caught up with regards to me removing the um, static content and re-adding it. But yeah, that's the that's the cat opening and closing. 
um, and everything and it's error free just have a look at that again yeah it's all good so let me just yeah yeah that's all right then um, that's about it for today um, as I say this code will be on on github the actual cart part of this module which you'll be able to grab and then find the parts that find the parts that you need uh, because the cart is useful and as is the um, the search that I did the other day that this is still in there so I showed you this before so we've got a, a bespoke search works in a similar way conceptually as the cart and that will go away to the API to get the information and it works dead fast so yeah we're getting to the point now where um, Shall we finish it off with a light ops test? Let's finish it off with a light ops test. We'll do a desktop one. Um, I ain't got any caches on or anything, but it's the other metrics I want to look at. But this is the point. Like it's you, you've seen how well it sort of works in terms of the cart and that. But we want to make sure that stuff. Even, I'm adding more things that we're not having a nightmare with regards to light house. And oh man, it's looking good in it. Like don't worry about these things. I'm not. I'm worried about these things. I go on, all the on about all the time your lack of cum cumulative layout shift with, by the way developer mode with the full page cache switched off uh, clearing the storage for it we've ended up with a 91 so a total blocking time 10 milliseconds these guys are the ones that are hard to fix we all know it these are easier to fix because these come down to the responsiveness of your server at the end of the day my server at the minute is my computer that I'm live streaming on so I'm happy with this and I've got Chrome extensions negative everything was against this this was not going to be a good light out speed test and guess what it's turned out to be quite good so i'm happy with that thanks for joining me um and obviously there'll be another one i will see you in another one um i'll figure out what to do i'll probably uh, advance again on something else with regards to this or i could i could flip to another topic um i might i might it's feeling quite um, robust this now uh, but there is other things in actually what i'm going to do next is i'm going to add an add to cart button on this page that interacts with that and updates the cart and slides it out that's what I'm going to do next week so tune in and um, if you like this type of content please smash a like on there as they say and and subscribe to my channel that would be amazing and um, yeah I will see you in, in the next one ta -ra.